Well, we had this gentleman on before the draft, and now it's after the draft. So we reach out once again to Chad Ryder from NFL Network here on Orange and Blue today. And Chad, they got Bo Nix, something that you had mocked to the Denver Broncos. Six quarterbacks in the top 12, dude. That was crazy. Yeah, it's it was insane. Um, Of course, there's some risk anytime you're taking the six. Well, the sixth of any position in the top 12, not much less quarterback. It's, it's a little, usually you look through the list of who the number six quarterbacks in the draft have been over the past 20, 25 years. And it's not fantastic, but there is one guy on that list that Bronco fans know, Mr. Russell Wilson. And so we'll see if this one turns out a little bit different. Um, But the three of us talked about this at the shrine game, right? And you asked me, what do I think of Bo Nix? And I said, he's going to be in that conversation with those other guys. Um, and he was. And, and um, you know, the Vikings got J.J. McCarthy. And the Giants decided against taking a quarterback. And then Denver ended up with Nix. And, and we'll see if the Giants regret that um, or not. But the, the Denver, you know, got a guy. And, of course, you're going to say it's their guy, right? I mean – that's who they had to pick, right? So who knows what they really thought of McCarthy and some other guys. But, um, you know, with as Peyton said, you, you can relax a little bit with Nick's in there because he's experienced, he's competitive, he's going to run the offense, he's going to make some plays off platform. And if the consistency's there, um, you know, he's, he's going to be a, a viable starter. Now, there's a, the critique of the pick is the those are saying, okay, the Broncos could have traded down, got him later. But with the way the board went, realistically, could they have moved down and no. gotten him? There, there you go. There's the answer. No, no and here's, yeah. here's the thing. Teams don't move down and pick a quarterback. It doesn't happen. It's very rare that it happens. They're moving up to get a quarterback or they stay put. Um, if they fall back, a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, they can trade back to 22 with Philadelphia. No. The Rams were taking Knicks at 19. Absolutely. If he's available. Um, So no, that's, that was not going to happen. It doesn't happen. And it wasn't going to happen. You either take, if you believe in them, you take them. You don't screw around. Now, now sometimes a team, as we've seen in the past, um, and that's why the Vikings did what they did to get to 23, because if the Giants take McCarthy and they, and, and they don't have a a great grade on Knicks or Penix, then they've already made that move into the late first to get one of those guys where they think their value is. And that would happen with Teddy Bridgewater. It happened with Lamar Jackson. It happened with other guys, right? Um, But, well, plus Denver didn't have the second round. I mean, you you know, I just just think they're in a position where they had to have a quarterback, and he is – he might not be plus in a lot of categories like arm strength and height and all those physical characteristics, but he's plus as a competitor. He's plus in experience. And sometimes that works out. He's Chad Ryder, NFL network joining orange and blue today with Cecil Lamy, Andrew Mason and evaluators that I trust that work in the league constantly say Nick's is a supercomputer. So what's it like for Sean Payton because he gets to chop it up about ball with a guy who's all about yeah. ball and, an, and he's like another coach on the field. Right. And that's, you know, why I thought he would be picked in my last mock. I think I had Minnesota taking him at 11 and a lot of people are like, there's no way he's going to go at 11. Well, guess what? If the giants would have taken McCarthy, he might've went at 11 to, to Minnesota because of what you're saying. He knows the game. He was He's been playing quarterback since he's a kid. He's a son of a former quarterback at Auburn. And early in his career at Auburn, you saw he made mistakes. He tried to do too much. He did all these things. And at, at Oregon, he got better. He worked through that. He, he got matured as a player. Um, now, will he still make this? Will he try to make hero plays? He will absolutely do that as a rookie. There's no question. Because that's the competitive side. Um, so he's got a just bring that back a little bit, work within the system, and you hope Peyton will help him do that, right? Um, but to me, they didn't have a lot of choices, I don't think. And um, and, and I think you take the guy that, that you think can, can run the show. The supercomputer on Bonix, like the, the, the processor, 
how does that allow him as a quarterback going to the NFL to overcome maybe not having the howitzer arm that some of the prospects taken ahead of him have? Sure. And, and his arm is fine. I mean, he's, he can make good throws. There's, there's no reason to think that he's he doesn't have below average arm. It's totally fine. And if he is able to process what the defense is giving him, then he knows where to get the ball and he can get it out quickly to the spot where it needs to go. Or if he knows he's going to have to look off one way, look to the other side of the field because he's seen what the defense is giving him on the other side of the field, then that's where that comes into play too. Um, and you don't want him to overthink either. So you've got to be able to uh, make that the, the decisive calls uh, quickly. And you're not going to be able to escape the pocket as easily as maybe he did at Oregon sometimes. And at Oregon, he, you know, a lot of people rip him for being a check down guy or a guy that just got his hand out, you know, the ball out of his hands really quickly. And he's going to have to do that in the NFL. So he's practiced at that. Um, but he's also going to have to make some plays off platform, which we've seen him do. Uh, so, I mean, I, you know, I get a lot of the factors that went into that selection. He is Chad Ryder from NFL Network. Chad, when the Broncos move up for Troy Franklin, you say what? Uh, a no-brainer. Uh, I mean, just in terms of his value there, the built-in chemistry with Knicks. Um, look, I understand why. T- I didn't love him. I mean, a lot of people are putting him late first round. Like, I, and I didn't love him in that spot. I tried to keep him late second, early third round. And going in the fourth, I think they're, you know, I, I get it. Uh, he and T- uh, Jatavian Sanders were the top two guys on the board uh, on day one. They went one and two, so it made sense. Um, now, is Franklin – I've I've got an article coming out next week about guys, day three guys who could become starters. And I threw Franklin in there with the caveat, like, look, he's probably fifth on the depth chart right now, right? Just if Tim Patrick is healthy – if Sutton is what he is, if Josh Reynolds can be a solid number two starter, and if Marvin Mims can stay healthy. So there's a lot of ifs there. So if he's healthy and him and Knicks have worked together and they can make plays, he could start, you know, seven, eight, nine games this year. I mean, he could. Um, so he's in that conversation. And maybe this year that doesn't happen if some of the veterans stick around or healthy and work well with Knicks and all that stuff. And, and that's fine. Year two, he's probably going to step into a larger role. But, but for what they where they got him, you know, made a whole lot of sense. You actually, Chad, gave the Broncos an A for their work on day three. Of course, it started with Troy Franklin, but overall, over day three, what did you like so much about the, what the Broncos did in those five picks? Well, I like Chris Abram drain in, in the fifth round. I mean, I get it; he's he's lean, uh, but. He's a he's a feisty corner, and I, and I love that. I just I just think he's a really really good. He could be a slot guy if they need him. McMillan isn't is hurt or whatever. Um, he could play outside a little bit too. I saw Estime getting Estime where they got him. Fine pick. Samaj P Ryan. He he's Samaj P Ryan, but less mileage. I mean, to me. So like, if if P Ryan doesn't do his thing in the preseason, Estime is going to be the number two guy to me. Um, so, no, another great pick there. Um, they got decent guys with Vele at the end. Garguzio, I mean, this, their depth, their depth on the roster. So they did what they needed to do, I think, with this draft. But really, you know, it's about Franklin. Getting him at that point was really the, the big thing. And, and filling some other holes, um, was it was a good job. There's Chad Ryder, NFL Network. Chad, I got another one for you. And it's not about Bo Nix. But I want to pick your brain about Jonah Ellis. Because he said he yeah. watched Hassan Reddick, and I thought, my God, I had more of a, a Highsmith like comparison. Yeah. Some yeah. people don't like pro yeah. comparisons, but it's kind of what you have to do. Yeah. So I was thinking yeah. high, a Highsmith. I always want to call him Hightower. Anyway, <laughs> so I was thinking the kid from Charlotte. Academy 12. Yes, yes, yes. And, and, of course, all three of us saw him at the Shrine game in the Trop years ago in that crazy spin move. So when you look at what you have now and it's like, okay, with Ellis, he's got multiple moves. And then he said, Hassan Reddick is who he watches. So I was like, I got to talk to Chad about this guy. Yeah. I I thought third may have been a little early for him just in terms of um, overall suddenness and athleticism. I I thought maybe he'd go on day three. Um, However, I'm not, you know, 
it's not that big of a difference. It's fine. They certainly needed another edge rusher um, to, to help that group. And, and if he could take advantage uh, of his technique um, and those moves, and if he can win against tackles without the athlete, uh, the elite athleticism, then they've, they've really got something there. Um, it's just a matter of whether he can do that or not, that he wasn't like a top 50 pick or whatever. That's, that's, that's the difference. And um and it's possibly done. It, he can. And, uh, and so hopefully he'll turn out to be what, what they want him to be. With Jonah Ellis, why did he kind of make that explosion last year, that four-game burst where he literally doubled his sack total yeah. from his career to that point, starting with that UCLA game last year? Well, it's it's often matchups when guys have that. Um, you know, in college, the, the competition you're facing can vary uh, greatly. So in, in his case, it was a little bit later than the year, but early in, like you'll see a lot of guys early in the year pile up these huge stats, and then when they get against better players, they don't win as well. Um, so he's got those tools in him to perform like that. But, it you know, the guys go through ebbs and flows of the season, and, and you're going to have some great games, and you're not going to have some great games against some better players. So um, I, I think that shows his potential. Uh, but you know, I don't, I couldn't read so much into that to think he should be an elite prospect. He is Chad Ryder, NFL Network. And uh, Mace, do you know what I feel like whenever we get Chad on the show? Oh boy, warm and fuzzy or something else? <laughs> How about this? <laughs> oh gosh, <laughs> yeah, Chad, oh, this has become a thing on this show. This gif in the last oh, week or so. Mm. To yeah. where people are tweeting this at me nice. randomly now. Nice. Nice. <laughs> uh, American Psycho, do you celebrate the entire uh, catalog, Chad? I, I'm sure you love that movie. I'm sure you love it. I, you know, to be honest, uh, I haven't seen it all the way through. I've seen enough of it in clips and all that stuff. But, um, you know, anything with Psycho in the title is generally not for me. I mean, obviously, the original <laughs> Psycho is... A, a classic, right. but you right. know, I, and you know, Christian Bale's great. I, no complaints, no complaints with that with that meme. But um, yeah, it's not uh, not not in the top of my movie. It's no Star Wars. That's for damn sure. There we there go. There you go. All right, he is Chad Ryder. Um, thank you for joining our show when you're on vacation, brother. Go enjoy that yes. beach. All right, will do. I always appreciate being on with you fellas and. Um, I'm glad that you guys get the Bo Nix experience and that I didn't lead you astray at the Shrine game. And, uh, you know, we, we'll see how it turns out. Mm. Chad, over the horizon, I'm just looking forward to the fact that we can talk about every other position next year and not go hyper on the quarterbacks for three months. That's It'd be right. fun to, because uh, it's funny because you mentioned Jonah Ellis and, you know, does he have that kind of elite ceiling? I have a feeling we'll be talking about edge rusher mm. an awful lot for the Broncos in the early months of 2025. Yeah, probably, probably. But you know, you don't know. Jonah has the ability to, to mm -hmm. break out. You, you don't know, but yeah, it's probably my, my guess too, is that we'll be, we'll be discussing that. Mm, Chad is the meat in the OBT sandwich. So Mace, how do you help us out on YouTube? Real easy. Like. Comment. Share. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell. So that you never, never miss. miss uh, uh vid. vid that's right <laughs> see chad's doing it too we uh, appreciate you guys go enjoy that beach chad thank you for your hard work in the nfl draft and nfl.com check out all of chad's work and uh, of course follow him on twitter x and we appreciate you he's mace i'm cease obt is a bfd stay tuned and would you please stay frosty <laughs> <laughs>